Jurassic Park turns 25, Amazon trying to buy a theater, and The Meg crosses a landmark. All this and more on Movie Emporium's News of the Day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Movie Emporium's News of the Day for August 17, 2018, where we take stories from around the world of movies, break them down, and tell you about them one by one. Thanks, as always, for uh, watching. If you like what we see, remember to rate, subscribe, check out YouTube, Audio Boom, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, anything we have, definitely check out. Tell us what you think. But with that, we'll jump straight into our first story, which is Amazon. Amazon's a big conglomerate a big mass entity. They are involved with everything, everything from food to electronics, anything you can imagine they're involved with. Now they want to get into the theater business. So there's this company called Landmark Theaters. They own about 250 theaters. They're an independent cinema. They do very low budget movies. They show low budget movies, I should say. Uh, Amazon, who's also known for making low budget movies like The Big Sick and they, you know, other movies you know, that come out, they're very popular, but they don't do a lot of money. They want to buy this theater company called Landmark Cinemas. And I'm guessing, I mean, it's not much to the article, but I'm guessing that they want to show their movies in more of a independent process where they can get them to like Oscar worthy or they can get them to more people to watch them. But I think Amazon just wants to buy the company just so that they have theaters to show stuff. They want to make more money. You know, Jeff Bezos is the richest guy in the world. He wants to make more money, of course. He wants his portfolio to expand, which I don't know how much farther you can expand it, but, you know, it's Jeff Bezos, so. But, with, you know, with that, there's not much else to it. There's still an early talk, so I think a couple other places have put in bids, but, you know, if Amazon gets it, great. A lot of the films they come out with are great. You know, Manchester by the Sea was pretty good. Very depressing, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But like I said you know cool so with that we'll go ahead and move on to our next story which is jurassic park 25th anniversary crazy to think right most people who watch youtube now weren't even alive when that movie came out i mean heck i was only what 11 years old when that movie came out so i remember seeing it vividly i remember where i was at seeing it it was a huge movie i think the biggest movie of the year at that time um so the, the, through, over the summer, Universal had their special anniversary celebration because Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was coming out. And they were showing, like, various theaters were showing Jurassic Park, the 25th anniversary. So now we have Fathom Events, which, if you guys have never heard of Fathom Events, it's this cool independent company that they take movies, like, well-known movies, like, for instance, Big or Big Lebowski or Maltese Falcon or Casablanca. And... They bring them back to theaters. They give them information before and after about the theater or about the movie itself, and they just kind of give you a little bit of a history lesson about it. It's very cool, you know. It's very fun to watch, but like I said, you can always go back and see movies you've never seen. Like Lawrence of Arabia was another film they they did, and Ben, ben Mikowitz goes in there and he talks to you. But the nice thing about this is, if you haven't seen Jurassic Park in the theater, this is the perfect opportunity. It's in late September, so I'll put the description in the page of the where you can go but you can see it in most theaters like amc or regal wherever they're showing it it's gonna be like 500 theaters but this is a perfect way to see this movie if you haven't seen the theater buy your ticket and go see it because you've seen it before it's an amazing fun action adventure that bleeds perfectly into the theater and that's what steven spielberg was going for and you don't get to see that much anymore but definitely check it out if you haven't seen the theater Congratulations to Jurassic Park for now making me feel old. So, but with that, we'll go ahead and move on to our new, next story, and that is, oh, the Meg. Yes, that movie. The movie that has a lot of people that like it, a lot of people that don't. So, the Meg is doing reasonably well. It did about forty-five million dollars over the weekend. It's continuing to snowball, but you know, with like Mile Twenty Two and Crazy Rich Asians coming out, it probably won't do as well. But it'll probably get over $100 million at some point. Um, it crossed over to $213 million internationally, which is not a huge number. But for a shark movie, that's actually really decent. Now is number three all time 
behind the shallows and 47 meters down as one of the most profitable shark movies. And, you know, for a movie that's not the most awesome movie, it's, but it's fun and entertaining, it's good to see that it did well. It's good for some people who were in that summer movie wager. So, but it's, I thought it was a fun story. It's, you know, it's nothing special, nothing exciting, but it's the Meg. It did well. We'll get more crazy shark movies, I'm sure. Jason Statham, you know, another actor gets another another role. So, but yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. So, it shows that shark movies have a healthy life right now. But anyway, so our next news story is Chris Jericho. If you don't know who Chris Jericho is, you haven't been watching WWE. To be fair, I don't watch a lot of WWE. So. Um, Chris Jericho is a famous wrestler. He's known for having this thing called The List, which I think is pretty funny, where basically if someone pisses him off, you know, it's a joke, but if someone pisses him off, he puts him on the list, and then he ends up like wrestling them or fighting them. But, um, so Kevin Smith, you guys all know him, Clerks and Mall Rats and Tusk and so on and so forth. Uh, he's doing what looks like an anthology movie. Kind of like Twilight Zone meets Creepshow, where it's a horror film, but it's, it looks like it's going to be an anthology. I, I don't know the, all the extent, but Chris Jericho has been cast as a Southern Florida, Floridian gator chaser. So whatever Kevin Smith is doing right now is nothing new. He did it with Tusk. He did it with um, Yoga Hosers. The guy is out there, but it's Kevin Smith, so I'm sure there'll be humor to it. There'll be outrageous landish uh, you know, language and so on and so forth. But Chris Jericho is always seems like he's game for this kind of stuff. It's like um, John Cena, you know, always game for doing crazy and weird stuff. And Kevin Smith being with what happened with him in the last year, I think he'll be fine um, doing a film like this. I think it'll be fun. So I don't know. I, but for the my friends out there who love Chris Jericho, I thought this was a fun story to talk about. And for anybody who I don't know that loves WWE, you know all about what Chris Jericho is about. So, you know, with that, that's pretty much it on the story. So with that, we'll go ahead and move on. All right, guys. So you know my love of Stephen King. I think I've talked about it on this very channel before, but I love Stephen King. I think Stephen King's in this amazing renaissance right now with his uh, his work with Castle Rock and, you know, Mr. Mercedes and everything that's coming out. I, I, I don't know what it is, but... Outside of the Dark Tower, I mean, we have Stephen King's, or It, that came out last year that was pretty awesome. Um, so, there's a divisive book called The Tommy Knockers, and it's about an alien invasion. It's not very good, but I think the Jimmy Smith's film that came out it was like 291 or something like that. I thought it was fun, but it's not a good, it's not great. It's not like The Stand or even The Langoliers, which I enjoy, but a lot of people don't. So, Tommy Knockers has hired a writer named Jeremy Slater to adapt the Tommy Knockers. Now, I'm of two minds of this. I mean, congratulations to him for, you know, being hired to write this because, you know, any movie you get hired to write is always a big deal, even if the movie's not great. Uh, you got to applaud them for at least getting the part. But when I've looked through his, like, IMDb credits and I see stuff like, Fantastic Four and Exorcist, and they 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 highlight this in the report. And then you see stuff also like Death Note. It makes you pause for a second, going, "Ooh, you know, I, I you know, shout out to you for getting the the role to write the movie, but Fantastic Four was pretty awful. I hate to say it, but it really was, and." You know, The Exorcist TV show I know wasn't great, but I don't know. I don't think the Tommy Knockers is going to be a very good movie. Um, it's just not this writer. It's just everything we've seen about it, it just doesn't make it very exciting to watch. So I hope it's good. I hope Jeremy Slater gets an opportunity to make it something special. But with stuff like The Stand, when John, Josh Boone, I think it was, was going to write it and direct it, and it didn't happen... I don't know. I'm more excited for the um, Doctor Sleep adaptation because at least they're trying to cast people that are of note, like you know Ewan McGregor and Rebecca Ferguson. But this Tommy Knockers thing doesn't sound right. It sounds kind of like the New Mutants, or you know, just stuff that just it seems like they're not trying. But like I said, it's early stages. 
This movie probably won't even come out until like 2020, so I could be wrong. It could be good. I know one person out there <laughs> was definitely not interested in it, so. But with that, you know, we'll go ahead and move on. But, you know, still congratulations to you. I hope you knock it out of the park. Look at Andy Muschietti. Knocked it out of the park with it, so. But our next news story is. All right, guys. I know you love Rambo. I'm not a huge fan of Rambo. I never have been. I'm sorry. I don't mean to upset you guys. All the people that watch that love Rambo, you're more than welcome to like Rambo. I don't care for it. I think it's nonsense. Um, maybe the first one is pretty decent, but Rambo 4 was just... It's what everybody wanted, violence, but that's not what Rambo was. Rambo was a guy coming back from, I think, Vietnam or Korea or something like that. A damaged man, and he has to fight off the the town police force. And it's, it, I, it's an interesting movie, but it's kind of like with... Maybe I'm just not a big Sylvester Stallone fan. I don't know, but... Anyways, so Rambo 5 is going to happen, and some character details and plots have come out, and I'm going to read them for you based off of uh, Movie Web, you know, as always. Um, it says, as a synopsis, it says, Rambo teams up with a journalist to track down and rescue a group of local girls that have been kidnapped by a Mexican sex trafficking ring. After trying to settle down to a quiet, peaceful life stateside at the family ranch in Arizona after spending decades abroad. So, okay, um, I'm sure it's going to be super violent, it's the Mexican cartel, Rambo is going to go on as Vendetta, it's probably going to be like Rambo 4 where it's just going to be nonsensical violence, and I, I, I don't always hate that kind of movie, but I think it was a little excessive, but that's just me, I mean, like I said, I'm not the hugest of Rambo fans, so, you know, the idea of Rambo going to Mexico to help little girls it's kind of intriguing it could be fun but it's like whatever it's rambo you guys will go see it so i just wanted to share that story because i know a lot of people out there do love rambo and do love rocky i actually enjoy creed so more than the original rocky so that's just me i'm whatever so okay so it's actually our last story but it might take a few minutes um so tony k if you don't know who this guy is, he directed a very controversial but very well done film called American History X. And it's a story of Edward Norton plays a skinhead Nazi who goes to prison after he's basically destroyed or killed. I think he's killed or very badly hurt um, a black person. And he becomes reformed and he tries to change his ways, tries to get his you know, brother out of the neo-Nazis. And it's a powerful movie. It's one of Edward Norton's best, if not his best role I've ever seen him in. And the movie is disturbing. It's dark. It's uncomfortable to watch. But it has an interesting message of trying to redeem yourself, of redemption. So there's this movie coming out that Tony K wants to direct called Second Born. And this wouldn't be like a huge story. Maybe if like Casper put into the movie that, you know, like an Edward Norton or uh, Ed Edward Furlong or somebody like that, you know, people that were in American History X. But what the interesting story about this is, is he wants to cast a robot, an actual real robot. Now, apparently Firstborn is based off a, it's a movie that Tony K wants to do a sequel of, and I don't know much about it. I've never really heard about it. But I'm pretty sure there was no robot in it. So I'm like I'm stuck on the idea of like Tony K is a madman. I mean, that's just how you get to it. I mean, any guy that wants to do a movie with a robot, I mean, yeah, you had like Ex Machina and you had iRobot. But he wants to cast an actual robot. These are people playing robots. He wants to cast an actual robot. And I'm like, either that's gonna be really awesome or that's just gonna be awful. There's no two ways about it. There's good and there's bad. I mean, we're, are we really at the point where robots can do the kind of things that actors and actresses can do? And you just sit there and go, okay, I, I don't know. It's really weird. Um, the idea that somebody wants to put a robot in the movie, I mean, are we going to get Bicentennial Man or are we going to get Ex Machina? I mean, I'm going towards Bicentennial Man because this movie doesn't make any sense. So... I mean, Tony K, I mean, good luck to you, but I don't know. This is really, really weird. Having a robot in a movie. 
Um, I want to say more, but there's not really much to talk about on it. It's just the fact that they want to put a robot, which is the way things are going now with wanting to like digitize actors who have passed away into commercials. If you've seen the Bruce Lee commercial, he's playing paddle or he's, I, I don't know, he's playing like table tennis or something like that. And it's like, it brings up this point of why can't actors who have passed away just show the work that they've already done? Why do we need to bring him back? And it's the same thing with robots. Are robots going to be that kind of thing where they're going to get so good that they become the thing? Are we going to get like a uh, Tom Cruise robot when he's passed away or a Tom Hanks robot when he passes away? I mean, it's just like, it's a really weird idea. And I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it works out. I'm always optimistic about it, but I'm just like, Okay, Tony K, whatever you want to do, man. I haven't seen you forever since American History X, so if you want to do a movie about a robot, do a movie with a robot. <laughs> so, but anyways, that's our last story, so with that. All right, guys, that'll do it for Movie Emporium's News of the Day for August 17, 2018. Thank you, as always, for checking out our content. Um, just to let you know, this is the last video of the week for Movie News of the Day, so we'll be back on Monday. But as always, if you like what you see, remember to hit us up on YouTube, subscribe, Audio Boom, Facebook, Twitter, email nlapolo113 at gmail.com. Also, there's going to be a whole bunch of, I believe, videos of different movies coming out this week with Mile 22, Alpha. I'm going to check out a movie called Puzzles and something called Little Mermaid. So keep an eye out for those. It should be posted anytime this weekend whenever I get around to seeing them. But like I said, thank you so much as always for watching, and we'll see you guys next Monday. Peace, guys.